the reality of reason Christ the dawn of something different. It is four short words in Greek, but seven in our English translations. He is not here, his reason. The Lord of glory, who breathed his last and surrounded his spirit, was raised to life on that first Easter morning. Death was defeated, hope reached with new heights, and the triumph song of sovereign love rang through every wreckage re- of the universe. From that moment, everything was different, radically different. With Easter fast approaching, we want you to experience the radical and transformative truth of the living Jesus. We want you to experience the reality of the risen Christ. Why you shouldn't rush God's timing? There is these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit reaches all things, even the deep things of God. Ever wonder why God kept the mystery of the good news of Christ hidden for so long? Generations went by before this most profound truth in the universe was finally re- revealed. When Adam and Eve were booted out of the garden why didn't he stand at the gate and shout hey hey guys don't worry just want you to know that i have good news this is what is uh, what is going to happen for centuries the mystery of christ was stored away in the old testament prophecies old testament figures like abraham and David David knew that God was merciful, but even they would not have understood it if God had simply drawn it out on the conference room whiteboard. Three things historically had to take place before it would be even remotely possible for humans to grasp the mystery. Jesus had to die. Jesus had to rise again. Jesus had to ascend and send his spirit. The dead burial and resurrection of God's son had to physically take place. The gospel doesn't work in theory. It's too contradictory by its nature that a holy, just, and righteous God would make such a profound sacrifice and essentially define the whole concept of grace. But as soon as Jesus died, rose again, ascended and sent his spirit, he worshipped down to Paul and said, okay Paul, here it is, reveal this. Suddenly, it all made sense in reality. Never rush the Lord's timing. He reveals His will in His own perfect time. Someday we will understand. Precious Jesus, thank you for allowing yourself to die, be buried, and then resurrect yourself in your own infinite power of my benefit. Thank you for your timing. It's always perfect, even when I don't see it myself. By the power of your spirit in my spirit, give me the faith to live and dance in the mystery of your unconditional sacrificial love for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Set your heart on things eternal, cause I had rather feel pain than nothing at all. Three days, grace, pain. Us people, what makes a song popular and changes or they will say, it sounds real. There is a strong desire in the human heart for anything that is real, even depressing, dark, and painful things are better than the numbness 
that uh, comes when a temporary high wears off and that's all the temporary world has to offer fast thrills and numbers numbness to find out how to live for joy we need to look to jesus how did he survive when he was living on earth cough out in the tension between the temporary and the eternal Jesus kept his heart and mind set on things eternal. Just read the gospel and see how often he talks to the Father. It's constant at every step in his journey on earth. Jesus was totally dependent on the Father. Look at how he cries out to the Father in his greatest hour of need just before the crucifixion Father if you are willing take his cup from me yet not my will but yours be done those are the words of our Lord focused on things above on things eternal and not temporary temporarily he was about to un- undergo a lot of pain and suffering etern- eternally he kept his eye on the glory to come may we do the same may we understand that the spiritual growth is about experiencing eternal truth while living in a temporary world we are being made man new through the grace of jesus the holy spirit lives in us the father's love never fails us this prayed the dependence on christ the spirit and the father is what we, we are after we cannot do a single thing of value for the eternal realm, realm uh, without his power with christ comes the fullness of joy apart from christ temporary and cheap trails jesus you are the great king this world seeks cheap trails and <coughs> tough dry pursuits i don't want that and i don't want it for those around me teach and shape me i want to live for eternity while uh, on earth show me how much joy you have father when i submit to you amen hallelujah amen don't pass over pass over a man can eat his dinner without understanding exactly how food nourishes him a man can accept what christ has done without knowing how it works indeed they certainly would not know how it works until he has accepted it my guess is that you like me have had some awkward moments at meals you know spilling red gel on, on your white skirt in front of the curly haired boy girl in elementary school or prom uh, 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 awkwardness defined for hundreds of dollars or meet the parents moments with your f- uh, fiance's family let's not go there I want to take you back to that fateful Passover night. Jesus was going to celebrate the Last Supper with his disciples. I am sure that some of the disciples had some wonderful high expectations. It was the Passover. Jesus had just come into Jerusalem with all the crowds adoring him and this was like energy. There was electricity in the air. So now they were going to celebrate Passover with the most popular guy in Jerusalem. So it seemed. But do you know what? Everything went wrong during that meal. There were plenty of awkward moments described for us in John's Gospel. 
It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Glory to you, Jesus. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of the Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. In this picture of the last meal, as the disciples shared with Christ, we see realistic images of what it means to be in Christ. Snapshots of life with his Jesus. It's a meal full of moments of misunderstanding, selfishness, and betrayal. Yes, Akbar, to say the least. Jesus, Lord Jesus, as I look at the awkward meal that you shared with your closest followers, open my eyes anew to the realities of being with you, being in you, and you living through me. Reveal to me new aspects of my identity as your child. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Allowing Jesus to serve you. In the kingdom of God, service is not a stepping stone to nobility. It is nobility. Uh, it is nobility. The only kind of nobility that is recognized. The last meal that Christ shared with his disciples was filled with awkward moments. Lots of them. The first one happened when they arrived. The preparations for the meal were definitely last minute. When Jesus and the guys got there, there uh, and sat down, the servant who was probably supposed to wash their feet didn't show up for work, didn't get the memo or was out of range at the camel races or something. Anyway, with no design, uh, designated servant around, the disciples were left looking at each other. Who is the food washing guy? Peter, is that your job? And they, uh, they are all kind of pointing their fingers. Well, who is the low, the low man on the totem pole? Who is going to do it? Who is going to take the role of the servant? No one does. Jesus gets up, takes off his clock, uh, clock wraps it around his waist, and starts washing their feet. Oh, what an awkward moment. I mean, the master is not supposed to do that. He gets to pee, my name's sake. Con uh, con uh, coincident coincidentally and of course no said Peter you shall never wash my feet Jesus answered unless I wash you 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 have no part with me was there awkward silence in the room maybe Ab uh, absolutely an awkward snapshot of a pervasive new principle that is revealed throughout the New Testament. The Christian life begins with and is sustained by Jesus' service to us, not by our supposed service to him. Pride and arrogance in our flesh will protest but the bottom line in that our identity in Christ is, in depe is dependent only on what he does and has done for us not on what we do for him in what ways do you need to allow Jesus to serve you and sustain you today 
says this seems so backward yet I ask you to humble me show me my need for you today break through my pride and make me willing to let you serve me today enabling me filling me strengthening me so that I can experience who I truly am in you amen hallelujah amen letting Jesus serve through you quit being uh, so selfish and give it to me Jesus was letting them have it all during the last meal he shared with his disciples he was sim uh, simultaneously uh, putting them in their place and communicating who they would shortly become to him of the Pentecost no doubt the boys were a little confused and conflicted uh, at that moment he had just told Peter that unless he let him serve him by washing his feet he had no place with him you do not realize now uh, what I am doing but later you will understand Jesus had just reserved the rules, then he changed the rules, and then he threw a major curve ball. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is uh, what I am. Now that that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash uh, one another feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these uh, things, you will be blessed if you do them. Do verses uh, like this feel, feel like a burden to you? They shouldn't if you consider the full example that Jesus set for us. He was fully dependent on the Father every step of the way. God moved him so that he could serve us and now he and now he, uh, he calls us to the same this very Jesus the servant Jesus live in us as we live in him it will be the most natural thing in the world for us to serve others where has God placed you today so that he can serve others through you Lord make me a servant no more than that would you serve through me today I am fully dependent on you to love and serve those around me particularly the difficult ones I stand aside surrendering my self effort I give in to your spirit in me give me some feet to wash amen hallelujah amen what do you, uh, what uh, to do when you feel like Judas? The greatest happiness of life is the conviction that we are loved, loved for ourselves, or rather loved in spite of ourselves. By the time they, they shared their last supper alone together, Jesus and his uh, disciples had been living day in and, uh, and day out together for three years. They knew each other very well or so they thought one of them was about to betray Jesus and the moment must have been intensely uh, awkward I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen uh, you you will believe that I am who I am Jesus was troubled in the spirit and testified very truly I tell you one of you is going to betray me so Jesus told him Judas 
what you are about to do do quickly but no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him as soon as Judas uh, had taken the bread he went out and it was night our flesh and mind are still vulnerable to temptation. This can lead to betrayers of many kinds. Sometimes you might even feel like Judas, a haunting awkwardness followed by the feeling that you have left Jesus and gone out into the night by yourself. Yeah, you might feel that way but the cool thing is that Jesus hasn't left you at all if you have uh, given your life to Christ and asked him to come in he has done just that his spirit now lives in your spirit you can rest in his uh, promise that he will never forsake you and never reject you Jesus I praise you for your unconditional love that is infinitely greater than my betrayers. Though I feel distance from you when I sin, I thank you, you for your promise that you will be there with me always. Use my sin as a graphic reminder of your forgiveness, mercy, and grace so that I will rest and depend on you to live through me amen hallelujah amen let your love shine love lead lived out deep down human hearts long for safety and security we long to be to be known and we long to be loved so what's the best way to experience the love that satisfies our deepest long longings how do we live in uh, God's love and live out love for one another, particularly when it comes to our closest and most intimate uh, relationships? In the Bible, you look at love through in, uh, illuminating uh, lenses, helping you uh, see how God in intends the light of love uh, to shine in your love life and the leaves uh, of uh, those around you. The power of his promises. There is no easy button to make your marriage more manageable, but our gracious God has promised to be near in spirit to all who trust him and humbly walk according to his word. Resting in his strength, pride is to character like the attic to the house, the highest part and generally the most empty. Peter was the man, even his name means rock. The first to speak, the first to take up this word, yeah, that guy. As Jesus continues the Passover meal with the disciples, bold Peter provides the next moment of of uh, awkwardness, a turn of events that no one was anticipating. They start to have conversation again. again. Jesus actually does a little cue and a time. Now the favorite teaching method of unprepared Sunday school leaders worldwide. Peter asks a question. Philip asks a question. Jesus answers those questions and in the course of this conversation, Jesus talks about the fact that he is hidden to death. Peter opens his mouth and prepares to insert his foot. Lord, why can't follow you now? I will lie down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down uh, your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the rooster uh, cross, you will uh, disown me three times. Oh, that must have stung, or not. May, my guess is uh, that 
Peter didn't believe it, even though it came from the lips of his Lord. Peter's good intentions, vocal uh, professions, and public declarations of uh, allegiance were not enough. Such bold confidence was likely the source of his demise. He believed himself to be strong, but before the roasted crowd, his den- denials were complete. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Oh, Jesus, I am weak, but you are strong. You are the way, the truth, and the life by myself. I, uh, by myself, I can be like Peter or even Judas. Without you, I am nothing and can do nothing. Though I share Peter's intentions, professions, and declarations left to myself, I can betray you like Judas. I recognize and confess that I cannot live as I should in my own strength. I rest in you and trust in you to live your life through me today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.